All right, this video is to help with the frog simulation AP computer science free response question part A. Uh, hopefully you've read over this already and given it a shot. If not, pause the video, try it first. Um, it'll make more sense if you've read it and tried it, and then just use this video to help you if you get stuck. All right, and it can be somewhat interactive. If you're stuck, watch a little bit. Maybe it makes sense then. Pause it, go back and finish. Um, and then you can always watch this video, check your answer. Okay. So this is a frog simulation, and we have a frog that's hopping that can hop both forwards and backwards. And um, one of the tricky parts about this is the variables aren't passed into the method necessarily, especially on part A. They are set by a constructor. So each frog simulation, you have a max number of hops the frog is allowed to hop, and you have a distance they're trying to reach. Okay, And those two variables are set in the constructor. Okay, So um, on part A, we're going to simulate a frog hopping and see if it reaches its goal distance or not. And notice that no variables come in. They are going to be these two variables, which are accessible because they're outside of any method. So we can use them in our method A um, without having to have them be passed in. Right? There's nothing being passed into this method. The other thing to note here in the code is that there's a method that, that does some random hop distance that can be both forward or backwards. Um, and so we're going to have to call that method uh, in in the simulate here to, to simulate the hop, frog hopping we're going to call that method um they give some pretty good examples here for does it reach its goal or not so again hopefully you've read this but um if the frog reaches the goal or passes it then we return true um if the frog goes to a negative position then we're going to return false we didn't make it so it hops negative value or out and then um you, if it, you reach your max hops and you still haven't reached your goal, then you want to return false. Okay, so they give a bunch of good examples here, which hopefully, you know, will make sense. This example, we have a length of 24 and a max of five hops. So in example one, they make it there in five hops, so they're okay. Example two, they make it there in four and can stop. Uh, example three, again, you made it there in only three hops. And then example four would be a false one because we went negative, so we don't even hop anymore because we went negative. And then example five, we did all our hops, so max of five, and still didn't make it. All right, so those are pretty good examples or test cases for you to think about when you're programming part A. Okay, so when I first looked at this, I thought I would do like a while loop, like maybe like while we haven't reached our goal or while we haven't gone negative, um, then keep jumping. And you can do that. Um, that's actually how I originally wrote it. But then I investigated it a little bit more, and I thought, you know, you can actually just do a regular loop, and then inside of that loop, if your distance ever goes negative or goes above the goal distance, equal to or above the goal distance, then you can just return true, and that'll make the loop break. So you don't really need a while loop, right? Because in the examples they give, you know, there's a different number of hops, potentially. And so I was like, oh, I'll, we should do a while, but you can actually do a four and then just return. Like once you hit your goal or hit a negative, just return and then boom, you're good. All right. Uh, one thing we do need to do is keep track of how far we've hopped. So I'm just going to make a distance variable that says we haven't hopped any distance at all at the start. And now I'm going to do my for loop. So I'm going to call it hops and say we start at one hop and our hops has to say less than or equal to the max hops plus plus hop. So that's going to simulate hopping up to the number of max hops. And again, this max hops is just a variable that's globally accessible everywhere. All right. And so each time I'm going to hop, so when I hop, I'm going to call the hop distance method. And that's going to return a different distance each time, potentially negative. And I just want to add that to my distance. So I'm going to update my distance. I'm going to plus equal whatever the next hop is. All right, and now I'm going to see a couple things. Like if I've gone negative, so if my distance is less than zero, then uh, we want to return false. We didn't make it. Um, at this point, we could have actually made it. Maybe we had one giant hop or something and made it, or maybe on the third hop we make it. So I'm going to do an else if distance is greater than or equal to the max distance, or sorry, the goal distance, I think is what it's called. Again, that's a global variable from up here, goal distance. 
If it's greater than or equal to, then we made it. So I'm going to return true. And again, that could happen on any hop number, and then it'll just break this for loop. And then the final piece of this is if we get all the way to the end and we didn't, right? If we get all the way to the end, we didn't ever return to. We never made it, right? So at this point, we just return false because we never made our goal distance. We ran out of hops. All right, that's it. Hope that helps with part A.